I just want to talk to you shortly and briefly about my uh, first experience with the Rainer Trifocal IOL. Uh, these are my financial disclosures. Uh, we, do, uh, we are performing trials with Rainer um, from the Institute, but I have no personal financial interests in anything I'll be talking about. I think many of you know the injector system, which has been working very well for essentially many years. It's always being, again, improved here and there. Uh, that's the system we're using at the moment. A uh, very intuitive, simple system, two-step, preloaded. So um, this new lens is also on the same uh, system, injector system, and the same platform. And you also know this platform, essentially the same as for the monofocal lens, concerning material, concerning the haptics. So well-known and very well-tested. Let me now talk about the actual new thing, which is obviously the optics. Um, and what you can see here, uh, there are 16 diffractive steps, or let me say rings, um, altogether four and a half millimeter diffractive zone. Um, and outside, it's actually monofocal. Um, the idea is it's supposed to reduce visual disturbances. And you can see also be less dependent on pupil size, because it's very rare that we have a pupil which is much larger than four and a half or five millimeters and also as you know we have rexes overlap as well and even if the pupil may be six millimeters typically the rexes will overlap the lens and so you don't really have a usable six millimeter from that perspective and in mesopic conditions ideally distance vision should be even a little better so here you can see actually the dependence on pupil size um, and and we'll come to that in just a moment one thing which is very interesting on this very new diffractive step, and you'll see why it's quite different for it, uh, from the other diffractive lenses, the light loss is actually has been reduced to only 11%, um, which I believe at the moment, at least as far as we know, is the lowest light loss uh, on, the, on the market concerning trifocal lenses. Um, um, so you can see here for three millimeter pupil and even up to four and a half millimeters, it's pretty much constant. Essentially, the energy light split is about 50% for distance, and then 22% for intermediate and 26% for near. So uh, from that perspective, the nice thing is constant, even whether it's a 2.5, a 3.5, or 4.5 millimeter pupil. So you don't have that problem with pupil size, um, which has caused problems with some other lenses, um, as, as we know. Um, here, the... Um, uh, the, the idea of uh, a three and a half millimeter, uh, sorry, diopter near add and 1.75 diopters intermediate add. And you can see that will um, obviously translate to a uh, reading distance of about 37 centimeters and having the intermediate reading plane at about 75, which is typically arm's length, which is often also what we have for computer screens. Now let's have a look at the defocus curve. And this is the defocus curve with the, with the new trifocal. And uh, now we have to obviously set it into a comparison to, for example, the old, let me say old, or the former refractive bifocal lens, in this case from Rayner. And what you can see, there's a very clear win in intermediate vision, as you would expect for a trifocal. Very clear, but it also even for near vision, you can see, uh, is at least even actually better and also of a wider range. So also the reading distance can be a little closer than we are used to from the Rayner M-Flex. Now here is the interesting thing concerning the new diffractive design. Essentially it was actually a designed uh, in partnership with, uh, it says, leading European Technology Institute, which is actually just south of, of, of Vienna, so where I come from in Wiener Neustadt. Uh, they have a special cluster there um, for new technologies and also they have a very strong optics uh, team. And they actually came up with the design and together with the Rayner have developed that. And uh, what you can see is there is an a, a so-called typical um, asymmetrical component, which most of the uh, um, diffractive designs are like, and then also symmetrical component. What they do is they combine these two, and you come out with this quite special trifocal design. Um, everybody's taking up the cameras, take the photos quick, because I'm going to go to the next. <laughs> no worries, you can still see it. Now what you can see here is actually the comparison of the different trifocals which are on the market. You may know the Physiol and, 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 and the Acrylisa tree, which have been on the market for quite a while. They actually have a very similar design, these two, um, and, and that's also quite well known. And uh, that's probably also the reason why they also, they had a lot of legal disputes in the past, which I think have been resolved. But at the end of the day, they have a very similar design. Then you know, you may know the Panoptics, which has, you know, was released last year from Alcon. 
And you can see that has a slightly different uh, way of approaching the diffraction. And now you can see next to that the Rayner Ray 1 trifocal. And it has quite a different system. Um, so the idea is, and we'll show that right here, uh, the idea is that first of all the light loss is even a little less than with the others, which has been 14, 14% 14 and 12%. And you can also see that the, 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 the reading, uh, the, the, the distances both for the reading near and for intermediate uh, slightly different from, from some of the others, um, especially here for the, um, for the Alcon, the problem is that the reading uh, distance is quite far away and then the intermediate is quite close by, so they're very close together. And here we have a nicer and bigger spread. Um, and here you can again see the light distribution also here. The distance still gets a lot of light, actually most of those on the market, the others actually all sacrifice a little distance which I don't like too much because I think distance is still important at the end of the day when you do nighttime driving or if you just do driving in general, you want to have good distance vision, especially also under mesopic conditions. So um, I think from my perspective, um, 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 I like the idea of having a distant dominant eye, uh, lens at the end of the day. Here you can actually see uh, now again for pupil size and as you know, as I told you, most of the other lenses are pretty pupil size dependent. Um, and you can see some differences here again, always near intermediate and far, um, and the way uh, the, 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 the light is distributed among these, from a small pupil up to a big pupil. And you can see here for the Ray 1, it's actually very constant, up to four and a half, as I showed you before, and only then uh, does it become actually a really distance dominant lens, which makes sense again, because if you do nighttime driving, you want to have essentially distance dominance. And so you can see here quite some differences between the lenses, and it will be very interesting to see now in the clinical trials and also the clinical impressions we will get um, um, how that actually translates to, to, to patient function. Um, here looking at uh, the, the US uh, uh, targets, uh, target charts, which you probably know from, from the past from many other lenses, comparing now the Rayner uh, trifocal against the, the two, uh, let me say, market leaders for trifocals, namely Zeiss and Fusion. And you can see here um, um, quite comparable, if not even better, at intermediate, and at least, if not better, at near, so that looks pretty promising. Here now, that's for three millimeter pupil, and now for the four and a half millimeter pupil, again, at least comparable, maybe even a little better as it appears, especially for near. So again, here now, uh, this is a simulator study, so that means what happens here is these are healthy subjects. It's a special optical setup where the lens is put inside and the patients can look through the lens with an optical system and actually get the impression as if they had that lens in the eye. And this is actually a validated uh, system. And they've used that now to compare, in this case, uh, the Rayner Ray 1 trifocal. This is a defocus curve with this system in place. And now comparing it here to the Acrylisa tree. And you can see uh, that there are some differences here, the standard deviations to go along with that. And you can actually see that it seems to outperform not only in the near distance, but also here in this distance, let me say, of about uh, half a meter, two meters or half a diopter of defocus. Um, so again, we'll need to see what that, hap what that actually translates to in real, in real life, in patient function, but uh, that will be very interesting to see. So again, just to highlight here the differences uh, between these lenses, and you can see that actually the Rayner trifocal, obviously being the newest on the market, has also done its homework and has actually really ticked the, quite a few boxes where we think it may really be better than the others, or at least as good, um, um, shown in green. Now just to show you the first operation which I did, so it's the, uh, the usual um, preloaded system, which is obviously very uh, convenient, um, and which you probably know from the monofocal lens or the, the toric lenses, um, and the plunge is brought forward, very straightforward, and in this case, actually going into the eye. This is a 2.4 millimeter incision in this case, which I did, and the unfolding of the lens as we're used to. In this case, actually, I, I pressed the plunge a little too much, that slight pluming, which is not necessary. And now the lens is in the bag and pretty straightforward. And here you can see the lens in the eye, uh, and you can see the ring elements um, as, as, they, as they appear at the end of surgery. This is actually the first patient done worldwide. Um, you can see that the Rayner um, uh, co-worker is happy, I'm happy, the patient actually looked pretty happy too. 
but it's a little early to say because he just got the lens. You know, this is obviously just a joke. But actually, the patient was happy because we uh, have seen this patient uh, twice since since he was operated. These are just some post-op images. One hour after surgery, a month after surgery, sent as well. But this is nothing new. We know that this platform is well centered, um, and 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 these lenses look very clear and 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 look very quiet. These eyes. So to conclude my talk. Um, the Ray-1 trifocal has a new patented diffractive uh, step trifocal technology, as I showed you. A little different from what the others have done until now, and that's going to be uh, reduces light loss uh, in this only 11%, which is the lowest at the moment among the trifocals. We have a very smooth transition between intermediate and distance, and I showed you that as well. The light distribution being distant dominant, but I still having quite a bit of near and pretty good intermediate, and you saw that the intermediate vision was actually pretty good and was very comparable to the other trifocals. You know the Rayner IOL material and platform, don't need to say much about that, and also that it's fully preloaded and will go through a very small incision. And with that, I would like to stop and finish, and I'll be very happy to take any questions. I'll just need some headphones in order to do that. Thank you.